In this section, we'll do using a new type of safety strap called the buck squeeze. Your company may or may not use this type of safety strap for climbing wooden poles. Using a strap of this type properly can reduce the chance of injury should a fall occur. As with any piece of safety equipment, inspection prior to use is mandatory. Let's discuss how to properly inspect and maintain the buck squeeze system of straps and equipment. Starting with the woven pull strap, inspect the following. 1. The snap hooks. Make sure the gatekeeper is working properly, that it opens and shuts freely. Ensure there is no sticking, that the springs on the gatekeeper and the locking keeper have sufficient tension to operate. Lubricate if sticking. 2. The steel link connector. Inspect the steel link connector. The screw link should be tight and the pin secured in place. 3. The cam buckle. Test proper operation by attempting to move the brown strap while the cam buckle is in the locked position. If the strap can be moved, do not use. The cam buckle must be replaced. You should not be able to move the strap with the cam buckle locked. 4. Next, inspect the woven material straps. The brown neoprene strap is made of six plies of material with the two center plies colored red. The green woven strap is made of six layers of nylon with the two center layers colored red. In either case, if any red is showing through the woven material, discontinue use immediately and replace the strap. 5. To properly inspect the carabiner snap, Make sure the locking mechanism will automatically close and lock. If it sticks, discontinue use immediately and replace. 6. Finally, look over the paddle handle. The paddle handle is part of the cam buckle assembly and should need no maintenance. However, the yellow grip handle should be inspected for wear and exposed edges that may tear gloves or injure bare hands. Now that you have ensured the buck squeeze safety strap system is in proper working order, let's look at how to correctly mount the buck squeeze safety strap on a climber's body belt. Before the climber approaches the pole, connect the buck squeeze safety strap locking snap hooks to the body belt D-rings. Do this correctly, attach the locking snap hooks to the body belt D-rings with the gatekeeper pointing out away from the climber's body as shown in the video. Now with the buck squeeze safety strap properly mounted on the climber's body belt, approach the wooden pole to be climbed. Once in position with the carabiner connector disconnected from the outer strap connector D-ring, wrap the outer strap around the back of the pole and connect the carabiner connector to the outer strap connector D-ring. After the buck squeeze is fastened around the pole, the position of the locators of the two hardware components of the buck squeeze on the pole is critical for proper operation. One locator is the bolt that holds the cam buckle lever and the other is the hinged end of the carabiner connector gate. See the circumference of the pole as you might view the face of a clock. Now for right-handed climbers, place the hinged end of the carabiner connector gate at the clock's three o'clock position on the right side of the pole and the cam buckle bolt at the 9 o'clock position on the opposite side of the pole. Left-handed climbers would reverse this process. It's important that you never allow the hardware locators to fall within the 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock positions. In such cases, the strap's holding power may be diminished. Next, it is necessary that the buck squeeze safety strap be adjusted properly to the pole being climbed and to the individual using it before beginning the climb. To shorten the outer strap, thrust your hips forward to relieve tension and pull on the brown nylon strap as you push the cam buckle toward the pole. To lengthen the outer strap, simply lean back, putting tension on the belt and tap the cam buckle with the palm of your hand until you reach the desired length. Now the inner strap. The inner strap should be continually snug around the pole at all times. To make the inner strap longer, 
pull the friction buckle away from the body while applying pressure outward until you've pulled enough strap through the friction buckle to have the desired length. To shorten the inner strap, place one hand behind the pole and lean slightly toward the pole, taking tension off the inner strap. With the other hand, grab the end of the inner strap and pull it through the friction buckle toward the pole until you have the desired length. Prior to initiating the climb, it is a good idea to pre-adjust the inner strap so you can flip it to shoulder height while standing on the ground. Before you start your climb, grasp the carabiner connector in one hand and the paddle and inner strap in the other hand. Now you are ready to climb using the hitchhike method. To begin your climb, spread the carabiner and paddle approximately one inch on each side of the pole to allow enough slack around the pole to slide the unit to shoulder height. Always keep tension on the buck squeeze when the gaffs are moving. When you are positioned on the pole so the buck squeeze is at waist height and the climber gaffs are set, flip the strap upward to shoulder height. Repeat this procedure as you move up the pole. While hitchhiking, flip the strap between waist level and shoulder level for maximum comfort. Also, be sure to keep the strap hardware at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions and the inner strap snug at all times. For safest operation, do not let the straps fall below waistline as you ascend or descend. To descend using the hitchhike method, start with the buck squeeze tensioned at waist level, then climb down until the strap is at shoulder height. Secure the gaffs and flip the buck squeeze down to waist level. Repeat this procedure as you descend. Never hold the strap hardware open as you are moving. There should always be tension on the buck squeeze straps back to the body belt D-rings as you move for maximum protection. Let's talk more now about crossing over obstacles on poles. When the user ascends or descends the pole and comes to an obstruction, a second lanyard is required. Place the second safety lanyard above the obstruction when ascending and secure it to the body belt. Disconnect the carabiner connector from the outer strap connector D-ring. Place them both over the obstruction and the second safety lanyard which is already in place. With the buck squeeze above the obstruction, adjust the outer straps so that the hardware locators are again at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions, assuring that the inner strap is snug against the pole. Now with the buck squeeze properly secure, Disconnect the second safety lanyard and continue your ascent. Descending past an obstruction is similar. Use the second safety lanyard above the obstacle to secure your position, then reposition the buck squeeze below the obstacle. Once secure, remove the second safety lanyard and continue your descent. Properly adjusted, the buck squeeze safety strap or similar models currently on the market will keep a falling climber from falling far if at all. Once the straps lock onto a pole, during a fall they will support the weight of the climber until he can reposition himself safely on the pole with his climbers and gaffs. As we have seen, the buck squeeze safety strap system can be a valuable addition to your climbing safety tool bag. As with any other safety tool, it is important to use it as designed and keep it in good condition.